morning, everybody. We're going to get started. Welcome to the Entrepreneur for Christ class. And welcome those who are on Zoom this morning. And welcome those in the class. Hope you're enjoying Mark's cocktail sauce this morning. Yeah. Try that out. So much fun. Triply delicious. This morning, Rich is going to talk to us about customer service in a couple of minutes. Let me open us up with prayer. Lord, Father, we come before you this morning with great joy. Thank you that we can meet together, we can be together, and we can encourage each other in our businesses and on our new endeavors as entrepreneurs. We give you up this morning. We pray especially for Rich that you would bless his talk and bless those of us who can receive it in new ways. Show us new ways for our businesses, new strategies, and walk with us. We pray this all in your name, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Rich Phillips. And Thank you. Hey, John. Well, thank you, everybody that has come out this morning, and uh, thank you to the Zoom audience out there for your participation. And gee, we'd love to see you come in here someday and just be able to shake your hand and, and see you in person. Um, before we get started, is this kind of loud? No, you know, it's down, down, right? It's, it should be fine. It's okay. Just a second. Yeah, turn. Okay, so before we get started, I really want to talk about what's happened this week. Uh, what we've seen in uh, in the Ukraine. Um, what we've seen here is freedom being attacked. And we've seen it in the people rising up and fighting back. I really believe it sobered our country up a little bit here. Uh, you know, we that have grew up here is something that we've grown into, we're used to it, we take it for granted. But as we know, these freedoms are God given. They're not given to us by man. We know what man will do. Man will rule us. But God gives us the freedom. You know, the missionaries that we support in our churches and in our private um, donations and all that, um, you can be sure the good news of Jesus Christ has been preached a lot in the Ukraine. You know, these people are not cutting and running. They are standing up and willing. You know, the Bible says there's no greater love than this that one would give his life for another. And that's what they're doing. And they are outnumbered by biblical proportions. And we know that the stories in God's word, God uses the small to confound the wise. Um, when Goliath was coming out to the children of Israel every single day, cursing the God of Israel, and of course they were in fear, they won't die. And then David came on the scene, and he saw this giant, and uh, he, he went right forward. And the only place that he could be penetrated was right before he had to be out one shot, brought him down. Um, Gideon. With all his forces, he he was still way over, uh, under under uh, supported as far as troops. But then God said, "You still have too many," and so it finally got down to watch how they drink the water. The men they get on their hands and knees and bring the water up to their mouth. Those are the ones you take. The other ones sent home, and it turned out he had three hundred men left. And guess what? Did he won. You know the Bible says that. The battle doesn't belong. The battle belongs to the Lord. Yeah. And this person, I'm going to mention person. I'm not even going to mention the name. <clears throat> this person is really challenging God. He's a Goliath. He's the armies against Israel. He's the armies against Jesus Christ. He, he represents the boo on your throat is what he represents. You know, we see... We see that 
we see him forcing his way in and these people fighting back. In our own border, we see people coming in by the droves with all our warts, with all our bruises, with all our scars, they're still fighting to come here. <clears throat> I'm going to read from Galatians 5, verse 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, then, and do not let yourself be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. This morning, he's talked about nukes. The man is getting desperate. He sees his own troops laying the rifle right down, too. They're having a hard time fighting their own blood. Um, see, he doesn't see things like people that have a heart. And also, to the Russian people, they've rose up too. You know, the gospel of Jesus Christ has been preached in Russia for a lot of years now since Gorbachev. They've, they've heard the good news of Jesus Christ there in Russia too. The people have heard it. <clears throat> and he's finding out that this isn't so easy and he's getting desperate and you know what the saying says desperate um use desperate desperate measures are used and so we don't know what's going to happen we don't know we don't know if it is god's will what did he, whatever you believe about the end times and, and what's going to happen we don't we don't know uh you know we know in the end we look at revelation there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, and um, this one's going to be destroyed eventually. We don't know if this is a time or not, uh, but this this is a time that that um, does try men's souls and checks out our own our own lives. And uh, freedom freedom is a is a precious thing. Um, we all love it in our own personal lives, and when somebody does kind of control us, it takes the zest for life out of us. <clears throat> and I don't know, maybe I'm preaching to the choir here with this next, but we're really never truly free until we ask Jesus Christ to come in our heart and forgive our sin. We're still burdened by that in our personal lives, but he took our sin on that cross. It says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So um, I'm just going to say a little short prayer, and then we'll go on with since you didn't bring the laptop, we give you a little leeway here. Uh, so, but I'm almost, I'm almost there. I'm going to pray the prayer that I prayed uh, when I was 36 years old, and uh, it means something to me. And it's not the prayer so much as he, it's the attitude he puts in the heart. So, um, the Bible, said, the scripture verse this one pastor said one day really hit me and said, "That's it." It's Romans 10, verse 9. If you'll confess with your lips the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with your lips you confess and are justified, and with your heart you believe. That's it. He did it all. We can't add a thing. Just trust in Christ, and thou shalt be saved. So here's the prayer. I pray, Jesus, come into my heart. Thank you for dying for my sin. Help me to follow you. I believe that you rose from the dead and you are alive today. Help me to follow you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. So <clears throat> we are truly free when we were, we are truly, truly free when our guilt and our shame and our sin have been forgiven. We have trouble forgiving ourselves, but we're truly free that way. We pray for the Ukrainian people. They are us. They are us. They are our grandfathers and our fathers of fought in World War II, World War I, the Civil War, Vietnam. Um, Afghanistan, Iraq, they are us. They are fighting. They are us. And I've, there's this one lady that I saw this guy yesterday morning. Her name is Elena, a young Iraqi lady. She's holding her five month old little baby. She's got her three month, and she's been corresponding in, in the barracks. <clears throat> she's holding a five month old baby. She has her three year old son. And her five-year-old daughter next to her. 
Her husband's out on the streets, never had him again before in his life. But he's got a gun and he's out there fighting while she's in the bunker with her three kids. <clears throat> and she was so clear and eloquent uh, in her talking, but very, very brave and very, very determined for her family, for her children. And uh, how could we, how can our hearts not be gone out? We, with, with the technology that we have, we see these people are talking to us. It's not like World War II <clears throat> when that you would go to the movie theater once a week and you'd have a newsreel, and that might be a month old or something like that. We're seeing it in real time, people talking to us. And uh, this, this thing of freedom is just a, a blessed thing. Anyway, I'll get to uh, the topic today. I don't have any uh, thing up here back of here. So the topic was going to be customer, what was that? Customer uh, complaints. Yeah, but but we changed it midstream, and it's called enlarging your territory. Um, so enlarging your territory. Um, you know, we think, oh, you know, start a franchise or maybe a new location, maybe. Um, a fleet of cars, delivery and all that. But it could be adding an employee, maybe even a part-time employee, or maybe getting a, a new piece of equipment, or maybe say if you have a car wash, maybe you're going to add detailing. So expanding your business, it's not how big it is, it's just about growing. Um, so there's a popular, about 10, 15 years ago, it was very, very trendy and popular for pastors that talk about this one man in First Chronicles chapter four. His name is Jabez. And uh, there's been many books written about Jabez. And um, he, he just comes out of nowhere. You know, First Chronicles for me, forgive me God, but First Chronicles for me, at least the first part of First Chronicles to me, it's the most, I mean, it goes on about the, all the ancestors and and the uh, whole thing, and if you're going to determine to read, the news goes on and on and on. I mean, it makes, De a De it makes a Deuteronomy and Leviticus a real page turn to me. But right in the beginning of this, this first chronicle, with all the cumbersome relatives and everything, it talks about Jabez. And it just breaks it up. It's talking about these ancestors and the other people, and all of a sudden, verse 9 of chapter 4. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Verse 10, Jabez cried out to God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm, so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. That's the last time you heard from Jabez. That's the last time you heard him. He came in, did this prayer about blessing your territory. Yes, Carlos. I almost told him that if you're not expanding, I'm sorry. I was told that if you're not expanding your business, you're decreasing your business. I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah. That's what I was told. You, yeah, I, I definitely believe in that. I, I'm sure we got some really good uh, entrepreneurs in here that could testify to that. If you're not growing, you're increasing. And they say that about our Christian faith too. If you're not growing, you, then you're receiving. <clears throat> so it's just like it's just like what life is, really, when you think about it. You know. Um, You know, Jabez was told by his mother that he was born in pain. And that seemed to stick with him. Uh, because in the, in the very last, the next to last verse, he said, uh, keep me armed so I will be free from pain. It really um, enveloped in him that his mother said that, you know, you came with a lot of pain. And how many people were told when they were young, you know, when I go to Don Welch's 2B1 group at 12 o'clock, you know, we are 
the things in our childhood come with us, even as grown-ups, as, as adults. There's little things in there that we can think back that we still carry with us, whatever your story is. And um, David, you may have been told you'll never make it. Um, you're you're really not the brightest, or you know, you may have been told that along the way. But you know what? He prayed to God. He asked God, and God, the last verse said, and God granted his request. You know, without faith, we can't please God. We can't please him. And so much of our entrepreneuring is by faith. We do the best we can with the best abilities, with the best <clears throat> research on what we're researching, the clientele, the area we live in. And we just, so many things we do on faith. Um, but God's the one that brings in the hardest. Um, yes? Promise. How long have you been I mean, I worked for my dad for many years, and, but I really ran the business. I would say, how long have you been in the business? Officially, like, I've been running the business since like 1979, but since 89, I became, my dad passed away. And I became, yeah, since 1989. <laughs> And it, it happened suddenly. He had a massive heart attack. Okay, Rich, you're the man. And he was my rock. And, uh, but I learned a lot from him. And God, I went, I went right in the office. And I prayed on the other side of the desk. And I said, God, you're my employer now. I'm working for you. And um, anyway, so everybody has their story. But, you know. You did a raise. I did get a raise. You know, and uh, but um, enlarge my territory, let your hand be with me. God granted his request, and you know what? If Jabez can do it, God's a God, he wants to bless us. Um, yeah, and um, it's between you and God, and uh, he wants to bless us. Um, that was time for expansion. There was a picture of a clock on this one that Carlos didn't send me. It had a picture of a clock and the pointer showing. So that's what it would have been. I'm going to do the same one probably uh, April 24th. So we'll go to more detail about that. Okay, the next one was research the field. It's got this guy in like this African helmet in the pompous grass with like this. That's the next picture. <clears throat> that Carlos would say. But you know, I love Carlos. You know that. I love Carlos. Um, um, okay, the reason I'm going for that's the thing, too. You know, the Bible had practical, these are practical stories that people really did. But in the Bible, there's a spiritual part of it, too. Besides, he built a wall. He went up against his army, but there's a spiritual point of view too, and there is with us too in our business decisions. There's this, you know, we're going to do this, we got to get the employee to this, we got to da da da. But there's a spiritual side of our decisions too, and so that's why I'm using uh, scripture, her, scripture to go along with this, as it is entrepreneurs for Christ. Um, so this one here is um, research the fields. And I, and I, um, it's, it's in the, the book of Numbers when Moses sent 12 um, men, and which two of them were Joshua and Caleb. So Jabez was a real hero, right? And, and the other hero in the story is uh, Caleb. And he sent these men in to search out the land. And the scripture says that God already gave the land to them. So they already had the land. Moses, Moses and Aaron sent that in to search out the land. And they came back with a report. Um, they explored, they came back and reported back to them, yes, the land is filled with milk and honey. Yes, the fruit is enormous. But they came back with this other report that said, and they're filled with giants. There's no way that we can take this land, even though God already gave it to them. See, a lot of our, our entrepreneurship is through faith, is through faith. 
hard work, checking things out, working the numbers, but so much of it is by faith. <clears throat> but they're looking at the what they see only. And so they came back with the report. Yes, big fruit. You know, the whole thing, just like I said, milk and honey, but the giants, they're huge. Um, we'll never be able to, to take it. But then Caleb silenced, silenced the crowd. And by the way, he said, we should go up and take possession of the land or we can do it. You know, um, the crowd will always tell you it'll never work. You're just spinning your wheels. You're wasting your time. Naysayers. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, and in a way, we can't, we can't, we can't, I don't think we can judge them. I mean, you know, we do live in a fallen world. Things fall apart, um, break. It's just kind of, we're used to it. And you can't really judge them to me, you know, expect it. Just expect it and say, bless you, bless you, you know. But don't let that get in the way of your goals. That isn't what God's doing with you, you know. Yes. When do you know? When do you know? When do you know? Yeah. When do you know when to expand during COVID, the pandemic? How do I know when to expand? Some of the best, some of the okay, I'm still on here. Some of the some of the best times to expand was when there is a pullback. When when things were being sold cheap because people were cutting money and they're scared. So um, you know that that really has to do with your with your hunches, with your knowledge of the business that you're in, with your faith is a big part of it too. And um you know, it, it's you know, it's 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 your own story. You know, when I guess if it was so easy, everybody would be doing it. Yeah, I heard that before, <laughs> right? And and you know, when everybody's doing it, it's their value. See, the, the, and that's why there's a risk reward. Um, I would say that you know, if you know your own business, you you. Uh, you have a feeling down in your gut. You know your gut, they call it your gut, your, your second brain. You know, and sometimes I hate that because my brain will think this, but then in my gut, I'm like, and it kind of breaks in reality a little bit. But I think it's up to every person to be able to know their business, uh, the faith they have in what they're doing, the faith in themselves. And, and, and you know, that's what I've said about too, about leadership too. Uh, when it comes to leadership, good leaders know what's going on. They they know the current events. They 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 know what's going on in the economy. I mean, they're not totally because they've got their business they're working, but they they know things. They read a lot. They read a lot. And yes, I know what I was going to say is that between the rational brain and the gut, it's the same thing as a declaration versus having a plan on the stand. When you see a witness, you're thinking of thousands and thousands of indicia. Whereas when you're reading a deck like that, your rational brain, you're considering maybe three or four items, but you're not considering the totality. Your gut is the totality. It's actually interesting. Wow. And you're thinking of cues that you're not even conscious of. Yes. And so I, that's, I think, the best uh, declaration of a piece of paper that's logical versus looking at clients on the set. And that's one of the big things when you have a case you want to put people on the stand because judges and juries pick up you know slight yeah. indicias you know you're lowering your face or whatever credibility and that's key that's what you're really yeah. saying can you repeat that can you repeat that that judge you think <laughs> but what i'm saying is what he's saying is go on your gut over your rational brain because what happens I analogize it to a declaration, which is a piece of paper where you're telling your story versus putting somebody on the stand when you look at it, you're picking up little indicia. So let's say you have a witness who writes a declaration. Well, great. It's a rational, it's your rational brain, you know, A, B, C, support problem. Whereas when you have somebody on the stand, it's quite a bit of intonation. You're picking up thousands and 
thousands of little data points. You know, so you have to, and so your gut, a lot of times your gut, and that's the same thing, your gut, not your rational mind, your gut is picking up thousands and thousands of indicia, data points, current events, and it's putting it all in the mesh and coming up and saying, you know, my gut, it doesn't feel right. Now, you don't always know why, but it, it should override your brain because your brain is only taking five or six items, you know, processing, well, it should be A, and then your gut says, no, it should be B. Now, you don't always know why. There's something, some data point that resonates, that's reverberating that your rational brain is not considering. So that's the point. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. This is my discussion. Move <laughs> over. I'm gonna help. Yeah. Um, um, so, um, like I said, uh, entrepreneurs um, they read a lot. They keep up with current events. They know what's going on in the world. Uh, they have their own what they think is, but they so so I think you take all those things into uh, consideration when you are going to expand what the company's doing and everything, but not necessarily, you know. Um, see, a good entrepreneur is always ahead of the curve. Uh, I guess you know so many of them have failed until they do make it big. You know, failure is failure is uh, is not is not bad because that can be turned into something good. But um, you know when to expand when when you've got your mind in line and you have faith that you can do it. And um, Richard, yes, I, I'm going to add something. So in 1999, I graduated with my degree in aviation management, thinking I was getting out of the medical. Okay. And I was given all the statistics for the next X amount of years where aviation was going. It was going to you know, go off the charts in aviation. And of course, with the internet booming, there was going to be a lot of people traveling left and right because now they could book online and so forth. So going forward, 911 happens. And then we have 2008 with the big financial boom, we'll call it. I wasn't affected per se, but I'll tell you, my, my gut instinct said something's going to happen. And I knew this. I bought my little business and I started it. It hasn't really flourished the way I wanted it to, but I still call myself a student in travel. And the bottom line is I think God directs us from the inside out. And I think each one of us, you know, have that um, desire to have God lead us. And we just have to lean on him. Yes. And that's the way I look at it. Absolutely. So I'm just saying, you know, we can look at statistics and data and so forth. But God, we, we lean on God. He's the one that really directs us. Absolutely. Praise God for that. Thank you, Kathy. You know, that's what I love about this group because, you know, when, when we're kind of rubbing elbows with each other, I mean, we're about people that, that are individuals, that, that have faith, that take on their own, that, that, that are positive. Most entrepreneurs are very positive people. Um, and it's good to be around positive people. Yes, correct. You, you know, it's funny. I, I really do believe you have to lean on the Holy Spirit. And I tell you what, the story, the story that I would say is that, uh, you know, you have a road, you got a fork in the road. One's a dirt road, one's a highway. But you don't know that over there, on the highway road, over the hill, the, the bridge is blown out. Right. And only the, the Holy Spirit will say, no, you don't want to go that path. And, and I, I tell you, there's no way our human minds can absorb all the data. It's not possible. Yeah. There's too many permutations, too many options. It just, you know, every day I'm on my knees, hey, Lord, just guide me, you know, give me, give me daily guidance and wisdom. Because, look, look, I'm educated, and that means nothing. Look, we have idiot, educated idiots running the country. You know what I mean? So, you know, they have all these degrees and everything else. And... I, I start laughing because you know it's, they don't know what they're doing. Um, but what I've learned is that literally, literally God will guide you. Uh, it's funny, I get insight. You know, I go to bed with the question, God gives me the answer in the morning, so oh, this is what you need to do. Yeah. And you know, of course, when God tells me, I say, God, that's obvious. Yeah. Well, obviously it ain't so obvious. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's obvious. Yeah. You know, and, and, and what's going on over there too, I, I think of it in a way, not to think a lot of things, 
you know, I think of the people over in Ukraine that are staying behind fighting. I think of them as all entrepreneurs. They're they're staying and they're fighting. They don't know if they're gonna win or not. They believe they're gonna win, right? They believe they're gonna win and they're fighting for something. And that's what entrepreneurs do. We fight for something. We fight for what what we believe in, what we don't believe that God hurt inside of us. It, and if we don't do it, we just can't live the type of life that we're supposed to live. I mean, so yes. Uh, a lot of talk this morning seems to be around the word faith. And faith is one of the hardest things to acquire because you believe in it, something that's not tangible. You can't reach out and touch it. Faith is one of the hardest things. It's not the fruits of the spirit. Actually, they say faithfulness, but that's faith. And it's one of the hardest things uh, to acquire. So if anyone in business is having a hard time putting faith, it's understandable. It's very hard to put a lot of faith in something that you don't know the answer to. Yeah. And one more quick comment is a little phrase I've heard throughout my career is, what is a winner? A winner is a loser that said, I'm going to try one more time. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. 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 The word faith, I relabeled that word if you said non tangible I relate it to determination and perseverance. That's my yes. definition. Yes. Whoa. That's a good one. So my first, just if you want to, my first one, time for expansion, that's from Jabez, first uh, first one 413. Research the field from Numbers 13, verse 1 and 2. Uh, about Joshua, Caleb. I want to be a Caleb. Let's do it. Let's just do it. You know, here's a couple of scripture verses that I picked out for this research the field, about having faith, about let's just do it. Uh, Philippians 4.13, Paul wrote, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can do all things which Christ strengthens me. Two, Romans 8.31, if God is for us, who can be against us? And then verse 37 says, no, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Okay, it's all spiritual things. But we birth that in our hearts and minds. You know, you know, fear, you know, Skip used to tell us that our biggest battle was besides death. And Jesus settled that story. Yeah, we should have took the sting on death. But, but fear is our biggest battle. And we, if, uh, and we can't have faith and fear at the same time. So I'm going to be, I want to be like a Caleb. Uh, okay, so the next one is know your demographic. I forget what that picture was. Um, I can tell you this, and it had all the different things that you would decide to have, um, you know, age, ages, of, and all, everything that has to do with your business. But I picked out Mark 6, verses 1 through 6, with Jesus, I can tell you what your demographic is, and I can tell you this for sure. Um, Jesus returned to his hometown and began teaching. They were amazed by him, and then they said, isn't he Mary's son? Isn't he the carpenter? And we know his brothers and sisters. Uh, and they took offense at him. You know, what's that saying that says uh, familiarity breeds contempt? Don't count on your family to do business with. Oh, don't count on your, that's the demographic that I would stay away from. Um, you know, family is precious, and those are going to be, they're going to be there at our gravesite. Our family will be there. But you know they mean they know you. Um, that seemed that seemed to be a really hard one um, when it comes to being an entrepreneur. Is your family? And I know many people do get into visit with family. And boy, it splits up a lot of families too. It's hard to fire. It is hard to fire your family. Yeah, and they will they will be the ones. Um, if, well, I'll just read on here. This is a short little thing. Um, a, you know, he, Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor except in his own hometown, among relatives and friends. And then it said, this is Jesus, right? He could do, he couldn't do many, many miracles. He couldn't do, he couldn't do hardly any miracles except heal a few sick people. And um, Jesus said that he was amazed at their lack of faith. 
So when you're, uh, don't count on your family to rally around you and cheer you and be all for you when it comes to business. You know, they, oh, come on, you know, you're, you know, you're, you know this and that, we knew you, you know, you've always been this way and that way. Yeah. And also, when you're doing good and your brother or sister in your family is not, yeah. that creates animosity. Right. They'd rather see you fail. They'd rather see you come back right. down because then you're not making them look good, right. but you've succeeded. I've had that. It's an underlining feeling that people have. Right. When the person next to you is doing, it's like your neighbor, buys them all these toys, jet skis, and you rock and you can't afford anything, you know, it make, doesn't make you look good. Yeah. So, and also with family, if you have them for employees, don't think they won't steal. Oh. Right. Because they got a different view. Yeah. You're part of the family. Right. 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 So, I mean, and I'm not saying everyone, but of course, don't be thinking just because you've hired your family that they're going to be honest. Yeah. And yeah. show up. Right. <laughs> You know, and there are some family that I've known personally where they've tried to, they've, they've, uh, they've loaned the person money to go into business. And, you know, for that, that's a great thing, you know. And it's not always that way. And some family members are very cool and, and all that. But don't count on it. I mean, Jesus had a hard time. So I would say your demographic should not be your immediate family. Your family is your family. Um, but business is business. And uh, I would say kind of steer away from that a little bit. Maybe don't tell them everything uh, about your business or anything. You just bless them in other ways. And uh, I, that, that's what I say about what your demographic shouldn't be. And I go by that verse in Mark 6, uh, 1 through 6. And you go back here on home calendar. They start saying, this one the guy who always gets the attention in the high school. And he was always in trouble and all that stuff. How can you do it? You know, and all that they won't give you the big party, you know. Uh, it, it's it's groups like this that that we should be seeking. You know, people that are positive, that are going for it. Um, iron sharpens iron, Bible says. So people that are taking chances and optimistic and, and all that, we can encourage them, they can encourage you. You know, Jesus said <clears throat> it's more blessed to give it than to see. But I found when you give, you, you actually do receive. You receive something that the world can't give you or money can't give you. So uh, I, I believe that entrepreneurs, <clears throat> that's what makes America great too, is the private, like the Joe Clark Center University, uh, what, what private money has done has just been a blessing to our country through business. Business has been brought about that, oh, business is a, a bad thing. No, business is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. <clears throat> so, um, but I'd say your family's family, business is business. Um, you'll have to make a decision about what to do there. Um, okay, we're almost done here, right? Um, the last one here is set a timeline, a goal and forecast about expenses. And uh, again, I like the, like I said, there's real stories about real. You know, I just love the Bible. It's fun to read the Bible. It really is. And um, it's real stories about real events. But there's always a spiritual side, just like our own personal life. We go and do this. But there's also a spiritual thing that goes along with that. Why do you get it? Is it that I have to seek a certain outcome? So um, in, um, in Luke 14, set a goal and timeline forecast. Luke 14, verse 28. Uh, to 30. I'm just going to read two verses here. Um, if my glasses are in there. Okay. <clears throat> Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, This person began to build and wasn't able to finish. So make sure when you start a project that, that you include all, as best you can, include all, all the expenses and there's always going to be overages all the time. Plan for that too. Plan for that. And have a, have a plan. Have a plan uh, for that. Be all prayed up. And uh, 
I have a verse for that, Proverbs 24, um, verse 27. Put your outdoor work in order and get your fields ready. After that, build your house. And so the ver I, I look at this verse and think of it this way. Make sure you have adequate income from your work before you build that greenhouse with that possible nightmare mortgage. <laughs> so, for 30 years. So, you know, there's, uh, you know, we had a guy that called on my shop and uh, he always had this one, he's selling Mitley Mitchell Manual, Jewish man, trick guy, really neat entrepreneur. You know, he had all kinds of different businesses going, but he selling these uh, manuals. He always had his lunch on his shirt, you know, a little sloppy trick, but uh, great guy. And, uh, but you know, the guy was very well, but you'd never know him. The way he talked, the way he acted, you know, he looked down to earth and everything. Just love the guy. So, anyway, uh, in, on April 24th, we'll go more into uh, these, the, a little deeper when I have the picture. So, anyway, thank you all for your. <laughs> Father, thank you for this class. Thank you for our wonderful speakers that come each week and people that help with the production of Zoom and everything, Lord. And I lift up our friends across the seas, Ukraine, and, and all the Christians that are trying to hold the fort, Lord. I just pray that you give them strength. 100,000 angels around each one, Lord. And I just pray for our goodness to come out of this, Lord. Yes. And, um, I pray for each member of our class here and those that are yet to come. And I just pray that our class will grow and you will hold us step and ask us in each one of us because we need that, Lord. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Guys. All right.